Yeah, Thank I'll, you guys. I'll be your uh, videographer for you. I'll just sit here and be like, yeah, it's still going. Put your hand no, in you the camera. You can be the guy who signs for him, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Three minutes, wrap it up. He'll go up next to me and like, he's lying. Don't listen to him. It's going to be in the sky. That's right. It's a spaceship. <laughs> Don't sink it. Yeah. Okay. He's putting all this gold on it. Other... I spent months on this presentation trying to figure out. Um, I, my my background. My name's Tony Olson. Uh, for those who don't know, you guys met me last last year. Hi, uh, Tony. It's the first time we met, but um, well, I, I got pancakes with you the other night. Oh, awesome! It gets also <laughs> like that. Um, I. Uh, it's hot. I I grew up with um, uh, my my dad worked for IBM stands for I've been moved so every couple of years we're always moving to a different place I lived in Germany twice as a youth and then I, went, I moved to East Germany on a mission moved all over the place left the country a couple times um, all on my own choice <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, last year we, we, we did this presentation we focused on um, trying to find people who would want to live on, on this platform and the truth is is that's gonna be a more what we're, we're, we're doing is we're creating a floating uh, port city out on, out on open sea. And the number of people who actually would want to live on that is fewer because most people don't want to live there leave their country. Most people want to hold on to the hope that they can change their country and get all the freedoms they want. And more power to them for doing that. But there is a class of people that would do that because they've already left their country, basically refugees. And that's what this presentation is about and how the Freedom Haven Project can help the refugees uh, in the world today. Um, That's a great idea, by the way. I didn't even think about it because they want to go to another country and give them a better place. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. This is our, our cool Freedom Haven logo. You can sit there and give homage to it. Oh! <laughs> I love having your image, thanks. Um, all week, Tony, all week. <laughs> Last uh, uh, last Saturday, I think we watch we, we watch movies at our site every uh, six to eight p.m. Um, we have movie night uh, tonight for the next two nights uh, tonight next night next night we're doing the three Atlas Shrug movies. Those are the last ones. Um, I keep forgetting to hit the pause button. Yeah. Okay. Um, Schindler's List. It's it's painful to watch, but it, it also feels so. Have you guys who, have you guys all watched the Shinosis before? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I did hit pause. Maybe I did. Never mind. Um, the Jews who got stuck in Germany had a hard time getting out, and if, if they had known what was going to happen with, uh, they couldn't they couldn't get permission to go to other countries. There was really there's a, uh, a limitation on how many Jews America was going to let in, which is really unfortunate. If they had known what was going to happen in the concentration camps, they would have fled much much more than they they would have. They would have, they would have said, okay, if you're going to put me in jail in your country, that's fine. If they're in the concentration camps, um, there's. Today, and throughout history, there are a lot of people, a lot of groups, or over those really quickly, who, who, in order to have freedom, have actually not only left their country, they've gone to where, outside to the frontier, where there's no country, to just obtain those freedoms. <coughs> but first, I want to start with defining what we mean when we say freedom. Some people talk about freedom as like having clarity of mind, or having having a lot of money, so much money that you can buy whatever you want, that's what we call it financial freedom, which is not to be confused with economic freedom, which is very different. Um, or some people say, um, I have, Soaring high in the clouds, and oh, I'm free. And, you know, and those are all valid definitions of freedom. But we're talking specifically here about something that's about social freedom and economic freedom. And to better understand what we're talking about when we say this, is um, uh, to, the opposite of the freedom we're talking about is force of compulsion. When someone threatens to murder you, kidnap you, or steal from you, and um, the opposite of that freedom is when you're living in a place where no one is threatening your life, freedom, or property. Basically, with the absence of that force, you being able to do whatever you want, that's freedom. It, do, it doesn't matter if you're poor, it doesn't matter if you're rich, it doesn't matter where you're living. If no one's trying to kill you, kidnap you, or, 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 or steal from you, you have freedom. That should be better. Okay. Um, the first group is the Thirty Year War, the Protestant Wars. They had, a, they had the number of people that were killed in that war was an equivalent to uh, the percentage of people killed in the Civil War. And some of the people 
Jesus when that person came over with the pilgrims and knelt down this country. But at that time, remember, the Mexican was founded in the first couple of years. And the festival, over the last couple of years, is that previously, the only events that really happened were at the building, at the building. And now there are events taking place everywhere. I mean, it's always been the case that there were events taking place everywhere, right? That, that's not new. There have always been random campsites, yeah, and of course the Fitoff really Live site has been here for 20 hard. years. Or, yeah. I don't know exactly when our first um, Fork Fest, Porcupine Freedom Festival was, but we have for a very long the, time. The, and people are always doing various the, things, but now the they can actually Nauvoo. have their um, at the time, events there were on the Nauvoo actual was actually Fest schedule. Yeah, and they have um, the different hubs, too, so you can register your site as a hub with you know, the, por the, yeah, the, the Porcupine Freedom Festival website, um, so people will know where to go for different events. So, yeah, I like that evolution. It's great. I do think the only criticism I have of it is that it's there's no filtering and search options available on the schedule. Yeah, I would love to see just the pavilion or get, it, get the option to turn the pavilion on and off. So, and also, someone uh, made their own, they basically took the Pork Fest schedule from the Pork Fest website and made their own calendar of it. So there are like different variations of the calendar floating around there, which is like such a libertarian thing to do, to be like, well, you and didn't really do a great job, so I'm going to just do my own thing and do it better. Uh, so, I just realized something. Uh, uh, the libertarians the out there organizing this thing, like Dennis Pratt and Constance, uh, what you guys need to do that's is you need to go to a rock music festival, uh, something like Incarceration or Louder Than Life, a, a multi-day music but festival with multiple stages. And you need to pay, pay very there. close attention to their yeah. schedule yeah. and their maps and how they do it. Yeah, because music festivals are typically would, very good at that. They'll have, you know, the, the different stages, the, and then it's my, so much easier to read than the Pork Fest schedule. Or they could just hire a nerd would, to make a better calendar a for the Pork Fest. I mean, it's yeah, really not that hard. No, it's so. not. And I, I mean, and all, this is based on what Dennis does great work, but I do suspect he did this himself. Home, and one person can't be the best at everything. So hiring someone to have done this or getting a volunteer to do it would have been fantastic. But I think it's just a matter of not knowing that it was really necessary in this particular case. And I think that going to a music festival. Because I still have the incarceration app installed on my phone, and I think I still have the Louder Than Life app installed on my phone. And it is night and day being able to monitor these festivals versus being able to monitor the schedule of the Pokemon Freedom Festival. I can filter by venue, by stage, by time, by day, and all of these other things. I just can't do it. That's just that's a tiny criticism, and the Pokemon Freedom Festival is still fantastic. There's also a lot more events going on at Porkfest than there would be at a music festival since That's it's true. so decentralized. And you can pretty much, anyone can host their own event and get it onto the Porkfest schedule. Um, and there's so many different hubs, a lot more so than your typical music festival. So it does, that schedule does get crowded and you'll be scrolling down it and there will be, you know, 10 different events scheduled for noon. So, just for example. Right, and what I like about it is that the Pokemon Freedom Festival doesn't put like its official speakers and events above or greater than... Yeah, it's all together. The, yeah, and I, I would sort of expect that like ones at the pavilion would be bolded or italicized or something. In fact, that would probably be useful, but they, they didn't do that. It's, it's all equal and it's right there on the schedule and honestly, good luck trying to find whatever it is that you're looking for. Like, I want to see what was happening today and after about Three minutes of it, I was like, oh, no, I'm not. This is a lot of scrolling. Like, honestly, the odds of me wanting to go see see this random okay. thing, there's no ability to filter by interest either. And I realize that, that's a dollar order. They may be able to turn venues on and off. But, yeah, some basic tags from people. Like, okay, I'm not interested in raising children. Turn children off, right? And that would remove those venues from or those events from my list. Yeah, just just thinking out loud here. Yeah, none of this is necessary. The event, absolutely beautiful. You gotta come check it out. There is still time. We are here until the twenty fifth at Rogers Campground, but it is June the twenty first, and that means that a little bit. Less going off to go uh, for me to on the prison. And as mentioned, Sorry about that. for those just not tuning in, hope we can only get the second hour of the show. Yep. I am going uh, you guys to the Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, to uh, Devons, Massachusetts, the, the like FMC there, it's the Federal <laughs> and, uh, Medical Correctional Facility, were China and, UK and from what I can tell, they, they're choosing to put me in a medical facility for the same reason that they kept me in a medical cell, 
southeast. And I was arrested um, in the one, they call it a small just, island. It's easier for them, um, and, and they don't they want to put trans women in the women's prison. The it's just so strange, strange because it, it, it's, are we trying to insinuate that being trans is like an illness? Like, are you sick? Or I don't know why they choose a medical the, the, the administration over well, they do sort of suggest that ADHD. trans people mm. are so material, like, and that, that's common in the medical so industry. I'm going to try to focus, but bear with me, I apologize. Job, um, five or six years ago, not that long ago, three they, years ago, uh, maybe. They, the administration and over in Hong Kong, Hong Kong was a poor, impoverished circle of Asia. These are pictures. From the guy said, all right, well, I need a letter from the therapist to prove this. Hong Kong, and then again, feel it's a poor person's country. Um, but but why the hell because the administration was in charge of need a the UK, took a hands-off approach, here in front of you basically let a paying customer, I'm going to do you six thousand dollars in cash. Let's do this thing. Let, 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 Hong Kong had the highest industry standard. I have to have a note of approval from the therapist to prove this. You don't require that system for for breast implants. Right now, we're at number twenty-five. And, and there um, are plenty of men who get these things done, but and after, just for trolling purposes. I can't remember the whole thing. But I, this I, happened. Nation, yeah, I heard of a story on um, <laughs> that show Botched. You see the huge a man lost a bet, and he went world. through with it and got now, uh, breast augmentation. And then, like, I think it took him like five or ten years to finally be like, ah, maybe I should get this. During the time they had freedom, they turned into rock. They had no resources. Yeah, it's completely crazy. It's so suge- it just suggests, it's stated outright um, that because I'm trans, I must be mentally this. ill and incapable of and making my own medical decision. I need a therapist to make those decisions. We don't know what it is or what, what, what they can reduce better if they have freedom. I actually freedom. know of one no, woman who got a breast augmentation. She was, I believe, 18 years old, in which, I mean, I would think that a trans woman in her 30s would probably be more better able to make a decision like whether or not to get a breast augmentation a 18 year old girl but whatever and this woman ended up having really they were her body was rejected and she got very, you know, very sick over them. them. And this There's wasn't of, even a uh, complication that they warned her about. Bubbles, she had absolutely no clue yes, that this yes, might be a possibility. So it's just crazy to me that they are letting, you know, young women do this. You know, I do think that an 18-year-old woman should be able to get a breast augmentation if she wants to, but so should trans women. And don't get me started on surgeons, man, and how they don't tell you what could go wrong. And I've had two surgeries. I had four heads. It's interesting uh, because you guys think of some examples in Singapore and of surgery, tyranny that happens there. Surgery and a trachea shape. Um, they, and last year I, they were I was not um, informed that I could, my voice now is significantly weaker than it has ever been. And I have to turn um, myself up to it. It's higher than ever before. Like the 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 there's just well, something we're looking to build free voice. And it is higher pitched. We'll have, uh, we're guessing and about uh, 95% until I go back through and I listen to some episodes of the show from like four or five years ago prior to the surgery. Just how much has changed. But like, you know, it's like, I don't hear it. So if you go back and directly compare it, there's a huge difference. But I wasn't warned that I could be lost for the rest of my life. I'm using most of it. We have other presentations for doing this to as well, which is the same thing as well. Yeah, Tony, don't worry. You've removed the primary oh, no, distraction yes, of the topless women. For, uh, so I can see right here, so thank you for that. I'm no focus. Good job. <laughs> so I started taking it, and I was very pleased with it. It was up in the corner. Once in the morning, and I wasn't even getting scratchy. My voice doesn't usually get that scratchy quality to it. So then you have to take the medication that you would otherwise need. I did otherwise need. And, uh, okay, the raspiness has been an issue through all of my uh, life. I just thought it was from smoking. And then it was like, ultimately from acid reflux. Uh, okay. I did not know something. I had that. There's a However, guy living in the, Italy the Adam's who apple was very much a, a I'm not at all happy with it. And I, I'm not, I, I, I feel, feel like my Adam's just apple was more like the now than it was prior to the surgery. And he insisted no, that they did a full removal, because sometimes they can't fully remove it, sometimes they can't. He insisted that they did a full removal, and what's happening here isn't this malaria. It's not an allergy. And I get out from then he made the he, argument he that, well, you know, there's this doctor in California who's actually doing decided research to build right now that shows um, it had, it having a permanent so apple so is actually more feminine. Like, I'm like, dude, I don't need you to gaslight me about yeah. yeah. like five miles offshore yeah. Italy, Adam's Italy, Italy, which back then was outside of their jurisdiction. I didn't get the result that I wanted, and you didn't tell me that what we were looking at. And they were actually in the process of being in the UN to acknowledge them as an illegal country. Kind of what you're wanting removed there, that's 
that's not your home job. Well, that's your, that's your trachea. We can't yeah, teach the, that. Um, or, yeah, you would think a good yeah. surgeon um, would do that. And I have some friends who go to get Botox and just, like, uh, non-surgical uh, cosmetic procedures. While basically. UN was in the process and of recognizing her, this as a former country, the woman that does it Italy, for her uh, is very honest with them. If they say, oh, I want to get this done, and she doesn't think that they will get the results she wants, or if it's just not possible to get the results that they want, she, this woman that is, they had all the countries in the world come together, together. and it she is very United honest Nations with them. She's like, I'm not going to do it because you either don't do that or um, it's not going to do what you think it's going to do. So I would think a good um, surgeon says that, okay, would be you have, honest you're about those things and say, hey, I'm not just going to take your money. Um, and maybe have more of a conversation about it and get deeper into those things and you know, speak with clients about what they really want, what end results they really want from these procedures, not just like, oh, okay, I'm going to take money and you know, do what I think I want to do. That is how I feel. This went down, especially the most recent one. The Bradworth and Forehead Council right there. Super happy with the physical look of the results. Like, yes, it did exactly what I expected to do. It made my forehead more permanent. Great. However, I've got two bumps here, one here, and one here that are pretty much exactly where you're doing horns would be, uh, interestingly enough. We're looking they were not there previously. Right here, and my hair got cut to the hospital. You get off half of the uh, length of my hair. My hair used to be down, and down Sri Lanka here. And, and I didn't get cut at all. Because 75% of the world's traffic right? will go But prior to the surgery, my hair was going away. And then the next time I was on free talk about it afterward, my hair was way the hell up here. And he denies having done that. And, uh, and he denies a few uh, other things in regard to the shipping just, on the ocean just is actually just like these bumps and like you, you should make these bumps go away. Right? Right. Right. Plus, um, I shouldn't have had to spend if you ship weeks on land, and have one truck driver not stress headache as a result of this. You never told me that my forehead would would feel like this after the fact. Like I'm six months now. Wait, I'm almost a year now. It's fine. And my my head is still not one hundred percent. It's not the same. So and because of I wasn't told like any of this would be the case, or any of this even could happen. But the vocal surgery the is the biggest issue, because it, because it just, just, to just when, the last time I could talk, I got a year of things, and like, hey, it's been a year since your surgery is an automatically generated um, email. So you can still have, so I responded back, so yeah, it'd be cheaper I, I'm not a religious person, and I'm not a complaint, I'm not a complaint, so I was never going to bring this up, but you guys asked, so no, I'm not going to bring this up, so I complained about my voice, and it didn't seem to be any different, I was scratchy I mean, it's just, it's just and raspy, and uh, uh, there was some other issue that I outlined and with them, is, and I, I don't understand what it was, and it's really not worth getting into all of it. Just, all I would not have brought it up, I'm otherwise, if okay. I hadn't brought it up, is I was never truly informed about Here what the some people who have retired. and their suggestion I was, oh, well, yeah, I did. Here's a number for the speech the ocean, therapist. Sure we'll and, about, you know, work with the speech of, therapist uh, for six months to your when I tell Are you going to pay for this? Ocean, or am I supposed to pay for this? Like yeah, because it wasn't an issue before, right? Right. right? right. And if I wanted to do a year of speech therapy and vocal training, then I wouldn't have gotten the surgery. The whole point of the surgery was to feminize my voice, so I wouldn't have to continually pay attention around the clock to my tone, my inflection, and my pitch. But I'm going to have to that anyway, just to get, so if I have to go through that vocal training uh, anyway, then what the saying, hell um, is the point of the yes, surgery? Yes, I'm homeless, you know? but you should see but, my yacht. And I do think it's helpful <laughs> um, that you're voicing your concerns and your um, results of your surgeries, because you know, a lot of people might be wanting Super to get Mario, these procedures, and maybe it's that's not like a, always Mario easy to get an honest review of procedures like this. You know, you might, like at Venture, you did a ton of research before you got these things, and that's I just think the more people uh, speak out about the results pushes. of different sort of, um, this any, is any procedure, not just plastic <coughs> surgery or world. cosmetic surgery, I mean, any one procedure they get, I think that's really them. helpful. And I would highly like, recommend but, against yeah, any sort of our, vocal that's, surgery that's, that's or um, maybe a trachea shaving will be fine if the doctor agrees that that's actually a good job or that nice box or whatever, but before I come to him, I would recommend it, it did what it was supposed to do, other than the UC groups had to have side effects that I haven't even brought up because I've got other stuff and then I was like, I don't know, 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 I
large artificial it has a population of close to 10,000 people. I, I love AI art. It's very picturesque. For some reason, I say that you love AI art. It's like a hotel room. There's a whole space All of the work on my websites, themezzogaming.com and arietamezzo.com, I actually have a video art. where a guy has... With the has, exception um, of the header for the Nintendo game one that I paid someone years ago to make. It was really good. goes through this camera and but try to capture AI everything on the cruise ship. AI art is cheap. Ship. It's easy to make. It only covers about maybe half of it. And I don't feel but like I'm so bugging the artificial intelligence. I've hired an artist recently. So I have a three-minute video. Can I show you what that's like on? This is Symphony of Seas. Visual interfaces where she took life. It's considered a new video one before that. It's a visual interface where she took life. They're just supposed to take the video layouts and give it the word I'm looking for here. All of these stuff. Watch it? You have the banners, yeah. okay. sure. uh, but it includes banners. Depends if it's boring but enough. there's a term for it for that layout. But the video layouts that we okay. use on Free Talk Live, they're supposed to take that and modify it to She Talk Live and make it look professional and all that. So that on Wednesdays, I could just load that up and I have go. VR headsets on my site where you can see it. was an entire rebooting of the logos and everything in the to Free Talk Live. Not, but if you guys want to come it's see it, difficult it's to explain like, what I mean to people who aren't familiar with the show. Like, oh, yeah, the, the show is called Free Talk Live, but on Wednesdays when we do it, it's the, it's the still Free Talk Live, um, but we call around. it She Talk Live. And trying to explain that to someone who isn't familiar with it, just, it did not happen. And she turned out to be, I think, Pakistani in a way. So a little bit of a language barrier there also. Yeah. This is and she did the, not understand what I was saying. It and came out good, but it, it was just different than what you wanted. Uh, wave, it was pretty different. There. I, but, and uh, if I told cool. an artificial intelligence to make me these templates, I you have make this, me a lot uh, of this video a, streaming, a slide yeah, I don't think it drops down like there. five stories but down to at least, least not feel like I was bugging oh, wow. someone by or are, um, accepting them. Like, hey, look, this, this is not this is part at all. Um, I meant. Board so one of the restaurants here. You phrase this. I know you just put you're on a boat. It's all one ship. Until it doesn't take So when they talk about floating cities. It's this coming, about. whether we like it or um, not. I, I look forward to the world where I can just tell an artificial intelligence, hey, this, this I a, love Doctor Who featuring Matt Smith uh, and Bergen Tech. So, give me a brand new episode of Doctor Who featuring those two actors battling the Daleks. You give me a whole season of Doctor Who, and it just spontaneously generates me a, a new episode of Doctor Who featuring Matt Smith and David Tennant and the Daleks. Yeah, I mean, a artificial intelligence might get to the point where it could do that for you and actually yeah, have it be good. This is, At this uh, point, um, I'm sure you've seen some of like, the commercials yeah, uh, that people will do, and it's like, oh, this is a commercial for Burger King, and it's just something like completely silly and ridiculous. Uh, and some of the uh, AI art is very good. Some of it is a, a little, like you can tell something's not right, right? Like it tried its best, it was close, but the arm's on backwards, or the, the hand has no fingers like I said, or something. This only covers, or it's far as I can tell, this is about half yeah. the ship. AI definitely struggles with this, but I do believe the artificial Intelligence, it will get to uh, that. They don't effect. have the, the water feeder. There's a water feeder there. The artificial there as well. intelligence, like most things with technology, it increases exponentially. Uh, like the internet increases exponentially. Back in 1999, no one would have predicted that I would be able to live stream a radio show here from the mountains of New Hampshire and it be video, maybe audio. They probably wouldn't have believed that was possible, especially for something the size of the world. Just in 30 that's years, what we're talking that's about. We're not talking about water So I don't know where artificial intelligence um, really goes. I look forward now, to that because that's a free me, market. That, that's amazing. A, yes, it makes a cruise awesome. ship it is tailored actors, around it, it doesn't really helping you feel like you're a wealthy because person. Because there are new actors who can give you new techniques yeah, for artificial intelligence you know, to work with. And lobster, writers to come up with new ideas. All these fancy stuff. And everything looks great. And whatever. It's very, very wasteful. If I could just tell artificial intelligence, give me a new episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. And it just automatically generates. So that's, that's, a yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Like, when you want to have give me a new you for it, right? Metallica and album. Because of and that, we think that we can create. Let's call it three load. Give me a and also the design. AI, uh, and it'll do it. Uh, a one day. cruise ship is and I look custom to that. built. To it's be already a snapshot there's economy, already an AI podcast. Essentially, it's an economy. Uh, that's, that's, I don't remember what it's called. Taylor Podcast AI, way, AI maybe. View. But it's um, just someone who uses artificial intelligence to create a script featuring two people living or dead. Sometimes imaginary, like never having like Harry Potter or whatever, being interviewed by someone else. 
The one that I heard was Elon you know, Musk. This is our design. Steve Ro Joe, Joe Rogan. And the interviewing the cost of living Steve here per person uh, is twenty thousand dollars a year oh, yes, with the low end, yes. bottom end. I, I if you want to live like uh, maybe, then maybe there's so many people. So, and that was interesting, and it was, it sounded real, it mimicked their Christian. voices, this is and I should never have known um, that that wasn't really Joe Rogan and Steve Jobs. It was a bit um, still thing at the beginning, on. but and after three or four minutes, if I know this just sounds like a conversation between Joe Rogan and Steve Jobs, this is good. It's kind of creepy because you people in the people don't know what is real in the world of deep fakes where it's already, you know, it's already really easy to Photoshop things very well. Well, that, that situation you know, for a month until they see your mind that gets something nicer. You know, that's what the are, market does. Is, but now it's getting it, to the point where you can just plug things into an AI and say, hey, I want this, hey, I want that. I want a video of this, I want a picture of this, I want a podcast of that. And so the bottom and, for this would be $5,000 a you know, I, I do think per person. that can be um, and that, that's what we're, a we're very going. dangerous this is the, thing. This is the Haven I don't project. think, you know, some people are advocating for, uh, I mean, Elon Musk was saying, oh, we need more legislation around AI to protect people, and some people just want to shut down altogether. You but can't shut something like this down. Uh, and it's it not possible. It's a concrete um, sphere. And I don't I think restricting it and making it creating and laws and around it, that's not work. going to help. It's, it's probably going to make it worse. Absolutely. Anyway. That imagine, and it's, because it's the people who make the these laws, I mean, no one in Congress is an artificial intelligence. The, the these are boomers, guys. And so I don't, all these I'm not going to ask my grandmother what her opinion on artificial intelligence is, because I don't care. She doesn't know anywhere near enough about it to have a worthwhile. She's not done. Um, and I was going to show you um, a different um, set of knowledge, right. but she doesn't uh, know anywhere uh, near enough about technology and the implications I, of artificial intelligence to make one of those decisions. Plus, not to be too cold, but she's like in her 90s. The people in Congress, they're old. They're not going to be around long enough to really deal with the consequences of the BS they're legislating. But I, I for one, don't think we should have a legislative body filled with people who will die for sure before the full consequences of their legislation come to realization. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. And they, they're certainly not knowledgeable enough to legislate in regard to artificial intelligence. So what will they do? They will do the same thing they always do. They will bring in, quote, the experts. They will bring in the you do have a limitation on how big it can be the, ultimately the because the multi-billion uh, dollar CEOs will come in basically and they will tell Congress what Congress a needs to do. Uh, and incidentally, like by this. sheer magical um, coincidence, you know, all of the suggestions that these big CEOs will have will just so uh, happen to submit point, their positions at the top of the field and will prevent competition from rising from the bottom of the field. And it's happened in every single industry that I've seen. This is why Congress is out there petitioning the federal government to try to create the regulations about cryptocurrency and what the regulations would be and how they would work. Coinbase deliberately, they set out to do this. This was their mission from day one. And it backfired on them. It did spectacularly. A few years ago, they sent someone to Washington, D.C. in order to, you know, we have some free pancakes on, our, on our site. And the yeah. SEC, Every morning, the Security and Exchanges Commission, that? was the only yeah. governmental body exactly. that refused to meet with In a real free market, uh, you're going to have all kinds of new cases. cases. And because there's a market for people. They are the devil. But they are the lesser devil. Yeah, I hate the federal government way more than that. We do have parks on the top. We'll have parks down here. So I'm in a really difficult position here of why should you be able to do that? Because that's what you're going to do. So I'm in a difficult position here of why should you be able to do that? Because that's what you're going to do. And one of them is a a little bit air, less air, evil uh, than the uh, other. It's, it's like we were talking about a few days ago on the show about if you have two Nazis fighting, structure. You can't pick a side because either way, you're a Nazi sympathizer. But I am a cryptocurrency advocate, so in this particular battle, I want the coin to to win. I want them to overcome. But there is still, I want them to die when we don't have to There's one coming anyway. Why the hell are we talking about AI anyway? That's coming up. It's a tough guy. So on that note, with these communal spaces, will there be hookers? Just for you, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Just for you. Actually, we're going to Mitch's Express for all of his uh, uh, special needs. Yes. Communal spaces. Yeah.
Um, so it's better that they don't grow there if they just get it from the ships that are passing. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, our ocean builders is building small no, it's like the whole process of thing. And it's not about freedom. They're just building fancy. The houses are really nice. I like them. Three to three thousand dollars is above what I can pay, but they're they're nice houses. Most seasteading projects out there. This is a seastead, but it's a little misleading because most sea, seastead is a play on words. Homestead on the seas, so a seastead. Most seasteads are um, are basically just houses for millionaires that are a few feet offshore or maybe a mile offshore the, well within the jurisdiction of that country you're, you're not getting any extra freedom there there is one other project out there called atlas island that is similar to ours but instead of having one common ship like this they're they're planning to have a just a huge uh, communal uh, harbor that everyone just has individual ships the problem with that is that out on the open seas it's very very difficult to to trade from ship to ship especially if there's any kind of waves whatsoever even though we're going to have something similar in here as well they don't have the, the wave breakers that go down to the wave base to cut off the, the wave energy from going in um so yeah uh, any questions? I mean, there's, a, there's, there's, we've been, this is year five that we've been working on this project. And how's it going? I mean, we've seen it for five years. Yeah. Is it headed in the right direction? So far, so far, um, we're, we finished phase one, there's four phases total. Phase one is the initial design, getting everything together. Do we have the pieces we need? Will this thing work? Do we, have, do we have everything we need to make this thing function if we had, if we had support? Phase two is the exploratory campaign where we say, is there interest in the world? Because if, if people don't want this and not willing to pay for this, it won't happen. Um, so that's where we're in right now, we're in phase two. Me marketing and, and, and yeah, all other marketing efforts to basically try to promote this and see, is there interest? And basically we find out from that by basically the marketing campaign is paid for by people who think this is a good idea. Um, actually, honestly, I'm paying for most of it myself out of pocket, but it, 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 it covers something. Um, last year, we, we, we raised a thousand dollars this year. We're raising two thousand dollars, and we're basically increasing it and, and, and getting more visibility each year. Um, we're also going to go hopefully go to uh, Freedom uh, Freedom Fest yeah. as well, um, if, if that works out for this year. Um, and so, phase two is twenty thousand dollars total, which is basically just marketing and also creating a, a 187 scale model. No, this is on our website as well. We're halfway, we're almost a little past one third of half, uh, one third of the way through phase two, and we're we're doing well. If we keep on the same path, by twenty thirty seven, this will be built. Um, phase three is when we actually get the actual investors. We find the actual investors who want to do this. They put down five hundred dollars uh, towards their cabs, and that will go towards the actual designing of this ship. This was created by us in CAD. And although we did our homework and we, we tried to figure out exactly what this would do and what's needed and so forth, yeah, there's no bow on the ship, but we're only going to be in a place where we're going one mile an hour, and it was decided we don't need the bow for that. Maybe we'll put a bow on it, we don't know. Um, but uh, Samsung Heavy Industries or some other kind of uh, shipyard will be the ones that actually do the final designs. So phase three is $2 million, and that'll go towards um, them doing the final designs, additional marketing, and prototyping of, of the actual structures. And in phase four is when they, we pay the rest of it, and they actually build the, the ship, and we have 10 years worth of maintenance and everything else to support this for 10 years. So how big are your uh, floating triangles? Uh, about 15 meters by 10 meters. Okay, and so if I wanted to buy, say, a plot of um, six of those in a hexagon, what would that cost? Um, we estimated there would be about $150,000 a piece. Hmm. I, could, I could put a brothel on that, that, yeah. that finance out. <laughs> when, when I look at the cost, that's pretty reasonable. Even if it's long by 100%. In, in phase three, when we have the Samsung Heavy Industries shipyard actually do the final designs for us, that's when the actual cost will be slid by a little more because this is based on, this is um, an aircraft carrier costs 17.5, the last one, the General Motors 4 air, aircraft carrier costs $17.5 billion to make, design and make. Um, the, air, the cruise ships, like the one we saw, Symphony of the Seas, is about 17, no, sorry, about $1.7 million to make. But, but these big container ships, um, Samsung Heavy Industries, each year, actually every month or so, they're building a new, new one. They're just mass producing these, these ships. And they're producing them slightly cheaper each year and slightly larger each year. So right now, the cost of one of these big, big container ships that hold 24 TUs is $165 million. Yeah, it is. 
And one, one of the reasons why the process is getting cheaper is because we're recycling of steel. Um, I'm not, and there are a lot of things with recycling where it's kind of a con. Yes. It's a joke. They don't pay you money for it. And, and, and it, it, you can't really recycle it. Like like plastic, you only recycle it once, and every time it gets more brittle, so you really can't do it forever. But steel is an exception. You can recycle steel over and over again. Because of that, these ships have become like big big temporary they, they use these ships for like 30 some odd years and we're done they take it and they have it recycled and get them to another ship and, and it's, it's a whole industry now. has anybody ever thought about they kept paying 24,000 those shipping containers have the shipping container in your house you know what I'm saying yes yes because the technology is already I mean I know yes. it Ports like in Holland, they have those shipping containers. People make them in the house. Yes, the tiny, tiny homes. It's amazing, yeah. and that there is some of that in here. But the, the difference between that and this is that in those container ships, you don't have a level to each one of the containers, yeah. and the containers don't have the hookups for water, septic, sewer, yeah, yeah, air, yeah, and so yeah. forth. And the hallways are small, and you have to step through these 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 um. Uh, uh, bulkheads. Bulkhead, bulkheads. To, to get to them. So, yes, so it's yes, not really. The word as you do yeah. it, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's it's not really conducive to a large population. But that is kind of popular. The, our hallways in here were going to be about three meters wide. And we're, we're hoping that is enough to get industrial stuff back and forth and get a lot of foot traffic. We have uh, staircases on both sides, and we're actually going to have one in the middle. Um, we have the, the water bulkheads. How, how much can, can one part sink before it is basically afloat and all that stuff, you know? Um, I'm trying to cover all those things. <clears throat> I have five years of data, five years of information we've been we've been going through and collecting. So it's it's hard for me to keep to the minimum just the bullet points on any of these questions. But I, I love the questions. Do you have any questions for this? Or so I showed up a little bit way off. From my understanding, the concept is this would exist somewhere in international waters, right? Uh, outside the exclusive economic zone. And where is the uh, proposed location for this? Uh, South Bay of Bengal, uh, between Singapore and India, where about 75% of the world's traffic go through. Gotcha, so it's in the middle of the shipping lanes. Yes, exactly. exactly. So aside from a brothel, obviously a big floating park would be very healthy for people to have. Yes. Having a little park with like a membership fee would be useful to have. Would there be any issues with the salty air and having like a deciduous foresty area? That's on the actually shore? a very good question. Yes, Thank you. yes. Um, there's, one, there, there's, a, there's a legume tree. There's only certain kinds of trees we can actually have out there that would, that would work with, with, with the salty air. Unless, of course, you want to have to be enclosed. I mean, oh, yeah, a dull dome of some kind. Yeah, I mean, on, on, on the Symphony of the Seas we saw, they have whatever trees they want to because it's like an enclosed out system. And, and I mean, enclosed enough because it's so tall that they can have whatever air and water they, they want. And one, one quick follow up. Um, would the top of the main vessel be something that a per person could lease? Because you already have desalinated air on that ship, so it would make a lot of sense for me to, to rent that top part, put my park up there, mm -hmm. where the air is already being desalinated anyway. Um, and actually, yeah, I don't, you can't see it right here, but those are this is all grayscale because yeah, yeah. we're using FreeCAD, and at a certain certain point, the colors don't work because right, right. I really push this product, uh, the, this the, the software to its limits. This seems like 100, 100 gigabytes in size just for the model, and you can download it for free on FreeCAD on our website freemaven.org. All this information you can download, all of it. Um, but the, yeah, so these, these are these are trees that oh, right, right. already yeah. Power. Power. What's going to be the source? Um, the main vessel will probably, it's the same with cruise ships that use nowadays, which is basically these big diesel, diesel generators. What they do is instead of it being a diesel powered ship, they have these big diesel engines that produce electricity and then they have <coughs> electrical engines. And we'll probably have to have a few, um, uh, no, uh, uh, as pods, um, as pods on the bottom, which basically the, those, 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 uh, Propellers on the bottom that rotate around different directions. Oh, okay. Um, as as azimuth as 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 thrusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but the the power source will be those diesel engines. But it's probably a. Uh, uh, we want to. Then that would be. Then you could mine Bitcoin, desalinate all we want. Yes. Lifter reactors. China has their process. The lifter is, is liquid fluoride thorium reactors, and that is a future for nuclear power. Oh, they're it's, incredible. It's very yeah. different than what we have today, and it, it, there's no radiation leak, um, no radiation. No chance of a bomb. No, no chance of a bomb. It, it's hard to explain, but what we have today is nuclear, but this is a different kind of nuclear. It's smaller, and there's no explosion because um, the, the heat is transferred not through water vapor, but through molten salt. 
and it was just not expanding. The fact that it always stays liquid. Long story short, there's so many levels of this. That you, you use up 100% uh, of the fuel instead of just 1% of the fuel that put away. Yeah. Whatever. Um, all that is amazing. Um, but uh, China is in the process of actually trying to mass produce these to get one nuclear power plant approved costs billions of dollars. And so every time you have a nuclear power plant somewhere, it just it takes forever. What China is trying, trying to do, and other countries as well, is say, okay, well, I'm going to get this design done, and we're just going to mass produce this a million of these. And so you can, you'll have a, 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 like a, a truck coming with this big container, and that's your nuclear power plant. It's going to be equivalent. Of a nuclear battery. Exactly. It's amazing. Change value 20. Yeah. And how many um, floating sea triangles per oh. nuclear reactor with thorium? Like for, uh, to make it float? No, they, they float by themselves. No, I, mean, I meant, oh, so the reactor itself is already uh, floatable. No, 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 no. Oh, I mean, how, how, many, how many of these would you need to actually uh, yeah. counteract the buoyancy? Ballpark, how much yeah. would it cost? Yeah. I, I, wait, how much do they weigh? How, how, many, how many triangles would we need? I have no idea. Okay. I know thorium is a heavier element, and it's a thorium salt, uh, and, and it's, it's probably incredibly heavy. But, I mean, I maybe we'd have it down here at the bottom anyway. So, so my question then also is, um, how would the power distribution be managed? Would there be like a planning board, and their whole thing is we just manage like the generators themselves? We would not be. The only thing that this project is providing in the cost of the project is septic and central air. Okay. Everything else, water, electricity, and so forth, we can provide those things. So we don't want a central plant. This is not right. a supposed to be a centrally planned economy. So next to my, my sea park, my sea brothel, I could have my little sea thorium reactor and sell yeah. power as well? Yeah, exactly. that's great. Yeah. Um, and, and they'll have com competitive of people course. competing for, yeah. uh, for, for, for electricity. You may have this company that charges this much for electricity, it's reliable, I can guarantee all the time, and this one charges like half the price for the same electricity. But, it but they have, they have, yeah, they have brownouts once a week, or and maybe yeah. once a month they have a power outage for an entire hour, yeah. but it's cheaper. So Make sure some clean cheese. power dirty girls would really be a nice mock <laughs> business. I mean, the idea is just happen, you know? Yeah. What would be the anticipated population? Oh, the initial population we're going for, we don't, we're selling space, we're not selling to the number of people. We don't care how many people you put in there, we don't care how you use the space, but our initial estimates are between five to, five to ten thousand people. That's the size of the town that I live in. Well, yeah, me too, Kika. We're, we're ten thousand people there. Um, one of these sea triangles, are there mechanical issues about building, t how, how high could you build off of one of those before it starts having um, uh, stability issues? Well, the problem with those is that um, there, there is an angle, uh, okay, I wish I wish I could kick myself off to my TV, I, I haven't figured that out yet, but yeah. um, if, uh, I, on, the, on the website, actually, uh, we'll do this sometime. On the website, you can see there's a, there's pictures of them. Um, the problem with the triangles is um, because the, the triangles have a a, a sway part, a swig, which is uh, half of forty. It, it's forty five degrees total, the top and bottom. So it's half of that is twenty two point five, whatever. Twenty five, twenty two point five degrees of of give and pull, and that basically cuts off the triangle on the top.